And true or false, I, I heard that Shotty wasn't stealing money from 6 9 necessarily. Shotty was just using the clout to then try to sign different artists. And he was basically like trying to like create yeah, something was that was going to exist for shows. outside. He probably of was doing shit for shows. They probably wanted 20 bands for a show. He like, nah, we ain't coming unless we get 30 bands. He mm-hmm. pocketed the 10, you know what I'm saying? He split the 20, shit like that. Weird shit he was doing like that at that time. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how this dude wasn't seen it. At that time, we never did nothing to him. Never took a dollar from him. They loyal as hell. What the fuck problems you ever seen we had with him in there? But that time when we stopped burning, the shot, he's filling his shirt up. So we like, you know what? I tell him, I said, you know what? I'm on the way to the motherfucking World Star show. Fuck is you talking about? We gonna fly out here, we gonna get 10 of our guys, we still gonna come out there, you stupid motherfucker. Mm-hmm. We gonna back up, we might beat your ass. If you even play with a shot, you done left your stupid ass, but we gonna hold you down here. We booked flights for 10 of us, bro. Me and Hoff, by ourselves, with the bro. We booked 10 flights, remember? Mm-hmm. Booked flights for like seven more bros. We fly to Houston, Texas, bro. Mm-hmm. Shotty still don't come. He's in New York chilling. In New York chilling. They on the internet. Where the fuck you at? Come to your show. Come to your show. You ain't chilling. You don't want your back in. They going crazy. This guy's scared. He's not even picking up the phone for us no more, bro. Sweet. At this time, I'm getting tight. I'm like, yo, bro, you had us fly all the way to Texas. We out here to hold you down. We at the World Star Show. I'm at that motherfucker with all that shit going on. I'm outside. I didn't even never go inside. And he's in the I'm hotel. Waiting. He probably in a hotel walking around the streets. He never show up. At that point, I'm like, yo, this is some sucker shit. I'm tired of involving myself in this shit. He not holding nobody down. He running off listening to Shotty. At that time, I didn't think it was going to be so bad. You say, you know what? We're going to fall back. Let's see what the fuck he going to do with Shotty by himself. What the fuck can Shotty do if we all back up right now? This is how we thinking. He, he going to be fucked. He don't got no crew. He don't got nobody. We cool. He still don't pick up the phone. He not picking up the phone the whole time. He sending me a little secret text. Yo, auto really shot. He said, don't pick up the phone, bro. Y'all gonna try to really violate and take me back home and then really try to hurt me and shit. And we, he gonna hold me down when he get back. I'm like, listen to what you're saying. He's not even here. I'm at the World Star Show, Danny. Where the fuck are you at? Come to the show. You embarrassing them. Yeah, why would you fly with nine other dudes to, <laughs> to Texas just to beat them up? I I'm telling Yeah. To beat you up, you that scared? I'm like, yo, we out here to help you bro they're embarrassing you on the internet i'm watching it now you're looking like a real bitch this is the first place you never show up how the fuck you go all the way to la but can't go to this fucking world star show bro right. he's like nah shoddy is saying some other shit i talked to harvin bro i yeah, said yo that, you know what bro we don't move like that we don't move like that bro we can't we i'm not the, let's just see what the fuck happened you know what i'm saying we at the world star show though. we sit there the whole night dudes come out nobody say nothing to us bro we see t grizzly all of them coming out I spin. We getting our whips. We spin. Boom. Go back to the hotels we at. I'm in. I'm in shock at this time. I'm like, damn. I've been holding this dude down. I fought at every fucking show. Miami. Oh, I got knocked out. I went to the hospital and everything, bro. For this nigga. I still. I ain't got no hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't got no hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram, bro. But I showed my loyalty and shit. What the fuck is wrong with this nigga? Uh-huh. Shit had me blow, bro. He, he don't give a fuck at this time. I'm like, yo, I'm not fucking with this dude. I don't give a fuck how famous he get, how rich. And a lot of people were saying that. What the fuck? Talking about, oh, you the and you did this. What the fuck? I didn't gain shit. I ain't lose shit. What the fuck, man? Yeah, that's crazy. Because, I mean, at that point, it's hard for you to imagine, like, how much you had already kind of compromised your morals in terms of falling in line with some bullshit that you never would have tolerated from anybody else, right? Thanks, bro. But it's just slowly creeping up. And then at that moment where he doesn't answer the phone in Texas or whatever, you're like, oh, like, this is really fucked up. Like, I really can't just deal with this shit anymore, right? Can't deal with it no more, bro. This shit is over, bro. This, this dude's bugging. At that time, I'm not like it's over. In my head, like, it's, it's shit. And I'm telling him, but in my mind, I'm like, you're going to come back and you're going to see that it's straight. You're going to see what's up and you're going to be apologizing and shit because you're going to see Shotty can't hold you down. Right. So we let it go, bro. And that's not how I went. What happened? He right back on the internet. Suck my dick to more people, beefing with more people. Now he's beefing with Chief Keith and shit. I'm looking at this shit on the internet. At this time, remember, I'm not around for none of this stuff no more. This is where the split happened. Shotty links up with Roe and, and a few more bros from the other side. And he starts running with them. They shoot the, uh, at this time, they shoot the video. No, he shot the got it, got it. Really? Uh, Get it up, which he stole from Pac-Man. If you go on the internet right now and go to Pac-Man, it got two million songs, and Pac-Man was really cool. He died in a car crash rest with 18K. Peace, so rest in peace, Pac-Man, bro. And I hope I'm speaking for your legacy and people can hear that I was Pac-Man's song, that he was beefing with Shadi, a lot of bullshit happened. And he convinced us not to take that song. 6 9 was on that song, and he was featured on that song. Pac-Man paid him to get on that song. He took the whole song, got 237 million views, and went and did it overseas, and that was fucked up, bro. Oh, damn. That was fucked up that Danny did that, allowed Shadi to trick him to do that bullshit. Shadi manipulated him, and I know Danny was young, but how could you let somebody manipulate you to do all this fuck shit, bro. 
you live in Shadi's life that he couldn't do. Wow. And it's sad that he allowed him to, to, to manipulate him and do all this stuff and shit on so many people. He didn't used to go see his moms. He got a brother that I was cool with. That was my man. I ain't going to say his name because I don't want to put him out there like that. But he didn't do, wasn't doing nothing for his brother. His mother was still living in Bushwick in the old broken down with the broke door. The one where he had given out the address. The, address, on, the one where he on given no the address jumper. on the shit. It was Locust the Avenue, right? Locust Avenue. Yeah. It was right there on Locust yeah. Street. But I just by remember Broadway. that for some reason. Yeah. yeah, that's a good. You remember that before I did, and I lived up the block. That was Locust. That was street he lived on right there by Broadway, bro. Because I remember somebody telling me that like his mom was still living there when he was Shady giving out the address. Shotty convinced him to get another a place in in another part of uh, Bushwick. I mean, uh -huh. um, in Bed Stuy, and he mm -hmm. was living in Bed Stuy right there. He was living right there, and a lot of people used to pull up, oh shit, 6 9 live here, it's lit, and he'd feel like, oh, we gonna hold you down, and we knew he lived right there, and we like, yo, this nigga is a clown, bro. Right. So was your attitude when you get back home, was your attitude like, I want to do something to this dude, or was your attitude more like, it. fuck it, I'm gonna just leave it alone? We get into it at the club. We got a club called, um, what club was that? That was Lust, right? Yeah, yeah. That was at Club Lust. They're in the club after that. After we come back from Texas and everything, and everybody comes back, he's in the club with Shadi and all them dudes chilling at Club Lust. Jay Critch and Rich the Kid is in the club at this time. Mm. So I'm like, this is like another slap in the face. This dude didn't even kill me. He left you in Texas. How the fuck you in the club with him partying, throwing up money? Mm. Again, we round up our guys, bro. We in that bitch. We pop out. We pop out. We go in the club. They let us right in. It was like, oh, they don't, nobody knows what's going on right now. So they're like, oh, your boy upstairs, yo. You know what I'm saying? They, they, every, you know, they, we had, nobody knows what's going on, really. They're not patting you down or nothing? Nothing. I come straight in this motherfucker. Shoddy over there. We run up a shoddy. We get into a little altercation. Security kick all of us out the club. You, him, all of y'all starting to share. We got Rich the Kid in here and your rainbow friend. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> the kick is outside. We get in an argument outside. And that's when the real beef started. Really? Real, like, fuck you, fuck you, you know what I mean? All that shit is lit, nigga, suck my dick, all that fire is lit. We had this club, I'm gonna see you type shit. Uh -huh. We spin off from each other. Danny spins with Shotty, so I knew what it was at this time. I'm like, all right, you spinning with Shotty, say that. Uh -huh. Shotty took him down hell from there on, right, right or wrong, right or right. You seen him go down from hell from down there. He beefing with Chief Keith, this motherfucker get on this shit, talking about pissing my authority, right? Uh, all that other shit would happen. I don't really give a fuck about it. You know what I'm saying? Then my man Harv got locked up for this shit. Harv was a good dude. He held it down the whole time, man. Free Harv. Free Harv. What the fuck Harv did every day wrong? Harv never fucked your baby moms or stole no money from you. Get up there. You testify on him. You testify on Nuke and other good dudes. Force them to take pleas that you don't even know. Right. You don't even know some of these dudes. These dudes don't even, you never even chill with. They was riding for the team and the stuff and what they was going on. Not for you. You don't even know them. You don't even know some of these dudes who's sitting in prison right now fucked up. Right. And that's fucked up. Up, bro. And even Kuda B was super loyal to him. And, and even Kuda right? B was super loyal, and that was his little friend. He was cool, to super. Busy, but Kuda B was blood. He wasn't I trade, but he was blood, and he helped it down for us and for him. And he was he was they was the same age, and they was really cool, and he danced a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? You got him fucked up. Yeah, you take a kid like him who got talent. He's got videos he's that got are talent, doing well online and shit, and you basically put him in a situation where also like nobody ever talks about this, but. It would have actually been one of the probably the biggest tragedies in rap history if Chief Keith got killed. Like, I mean, that would have been a massive moment in hip hop that we would still be talking yo, about to this day if yo, Chief Keith had yo, got Adam, killed. Pause. What are you beefing with Chief Keith? <laughs> I know exactly. What the fuck happened? I, I'm still lost till this day. What the fuck? What happened? I never had no beef. Me and Tato, we had our little shit on him and everybody know, but that was just little shit and how shit was coming on the back end. I was standing up for us. Tato was saying a lot of bullshit, but nobody had beef with Chief Keith for what? Right. We never even met. The like, dude. like, why does Chief Keith need to get shot at just because Tato and Six Nine had an argument about Cuban Doll? About Cuban Doll, and you beat the girl up, black both her eyes. Dub, what are you doing, stupid? Like, right. but then he took her to Hawaii, right? Yeah, and she, the girl, still back with him. You over there doing all this shit? She's ben, still ben, with Tato now. Danny took... <laughs> was so tender, Dick. He was the tenderest dick person I ever knew, bro. Really? I remember one time he was like, "Bro, I don't be fucking no bitches like that." This way, this before, right before the Gummo video, he was like, "Man, these videos. I mean, after these videos starting to blow, I'm really doing all this to just fuck all bad bitches, man. Now, fuck it. I used to listen to shit. He used to say, me. I used to be like, "Man, are you dumb?" Right. Because I mean, he probably wasn't exactly drowning in pussy, and then all of a sudden he's just. Nah. Getting it ridiculous. He was going go back to any of his videos, anything before that. He had no sauce, no drip, no jewelry, no nothing. Like I was talking to a, a friend of mine who was a big lean drinker, and he told me he used to always go to this lean dealer's house. There's like only a couple of lean dealers in New York around that time, I think, who really had a name for themselves. And he told me that Six Nine was always just sort of like lurking around at this dude's apartment, like while this guy was selling lean, and that he was just sort of around, just like observing whatever the fuck was going on in this environment and. He said it always struck him as really weird, and then when he became a popular rapper down the road, it seemed even weirder. 
then that, that whole situation with the little girl and stuff in the video, she was 13 years old. I didn't know that at the time. See, I'm, I'm watching mm. the stuff and I'm thinking, they said Yusuf was child in a sexual performance in a music video. He told us, like, yo, he, this is what he said. He said, listen, man, the girl, she came through. She said she was 19. She was just dancing in the video and stuff. But I think somebody had sex with her and some other stuff happened. They was playing with her or something like that. But she's 13, you know what I'm saying? You can really tell and look in a girl's face. You know, some girls be looking older, but 13? 13. She couldn't have looked 19. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel for him that he was super young and he might have just ended up in a bad position in that situation. But, but he was 19, though. Yeah, that's why in, we stopped talking, too. I was too. in prison. A lot of people saying, oh, he was young, he was a kid and stuff. He was 19, he was 20. When I was 19, I was in 20. I was in prison doing over 10 years, fighting for my life, holding it down. Hmm. So I don't want to hear that he was 19, he was a kid. I was a kid. Nobody looking at that. I went to prison. I was in there fighting, making fucking knives out of this shit. Hmm. Yeah, that's why we stopped talking about this, because I thought it was super corny how he denied that he ever even had a case about some kind of sexual shit, period, on his interview. Acted I've like nothing that. ever happened. Yeah, I was in the crib. He had the green hair. Yeah. I remember that. Oh, yeah, well, that was prior, but, like, oh, then you did another one. he did the actual interview, and it was like, he was just true. denied that there was anything at all that happened in terms of a case, and he's saying, look up my name, look up my name, search Daniel Hernandez, and then it comes out that there really was a case, and I was like, well, I felt weird about him just lying about it on the podcast, you know? Yeah. He lied about a lot, and he tapped into a fan base that is kind of hard to, to for his fans and stuff or people to get mad at him, which are a bunch of women, mm. a bunch of young girls, a bunch of young kids, and a bunch of the Spanish community, mm. hundreds of thousands of them from all over the, you know what I mean, the Spanish town. They look at him like, oh, you know, they kind of fuck with him on some big, some big shit because they don't have nobody that big. What big rapper, you know, besides Fat Joe and them that did it days was lit for the Spanish culture. You got some of them, mm. but they speak only Spanish. You know what I'm saying? They do Spanish music. Yeah, and that's a mind blowing thing is that like recently he's been posting on Instagram. He'll get a quarter million comments on a post, and you don't see one rapper. You don't see one person that you actually look at as being from like the real rap culture. Like not one New York rapper, not one LA rapper, not Nobody. one rapper. It's just Instagram models and Instagram comedians and shit in those comments. And some of these, these people are disgusting. Y'all supporting what he did to so many people just because, you know, that's some racist stuff to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Just because of the culture. I, I respect back in your culture and everything. All, all power to that. But when, when black dudes snitch and really go out there, we're not jacking that. Mm. Another classic interview in the books. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and head on over to nojumper.com to support. Appreciate y'all.